morning. Uh, yesterday we did Samaches, uh, Samad Aleph. We did uh, the Mishnah. We left off right, right after the Mishnah. So we'll start the very bo- bottom line of Samaches of 68a. The very bottom line. Where's Hill? <clears throat> okay, we thank Hashem they're able to learn Torah every day. We're learning Hashem for Beis Hamikdash. We're learning Lili Nishmas, David Goldavas Baruch Binyamin, and Musanal Sev Ben Benzion. Uh, we were introduced yesterday to this concept of the uh, iska. We are the investor. Um, the investor is dividing his money in half between a a, uh, a loan and a deposit, and which means that the one that's doing the labor has a responsibility on half. Full responsibility on half because that's a loan. That also means that he makes the, the, the loan money is all of his profit. Doesn't the, the loan money um, is uh, it doesn't have to give the profit of the loan money back to the investor. He's a showman on the other half. But he's a showman on the other half, and the other half is the other person's money is the investor's money, and the profit from that money goes directly back to the investor. Only problem is. That he was taking, um, he was doing the labor for free, as a reward for getting the loan. So the mission explained that you have to add in the wages. Besides for splitting it in half, the the labor has to has to get some compensation for the for the uh, for the labor. <clears throat> and if okay. he loses money, loses money. Then half, half of it he has to pay back automatically. Because it's a Picado. Right? Uh, like no, Picado. because it's a loan. It's a loan. So okay. Half he has to pay back automatically. Okay. Cut in half is, is if it was negligent, then he's responsible for that. And if it was like stolen or lost or some, you know, something that would depending on what category would go under. Then he may be um, he may be exempt from that. So he definitely incurs half the losses because of the, the loan money. The the profits he also makes off the loan money. The losses he also makes off the loan. Both of those is off the loan money because that's something that he has to pay back as it, uh, you know exactly the amount the fifty dollars he has to pay back. Um, Regardless of if he uh, of if he earned or, or lost, and um, if he earned on that, then that's great. Keeps it. So if he gets a hundred dollars and he, he loses it all, yeah, bad business. He still owes fifty. He owes fifty because of the loan that he can't claim it. There's no claim that uh, why he lost that. That's it's automatic a loss. And then another one you can claim, uh, maybe whatever. Mm-hmm. It's fault. It was uh, Ninus. It was uh, mm-hmm. half, half the money that he's watching. Is that the profit from the business? Or what is that? So if he gets, if he's given $100 mm-hmm. and he makes uh, 120 What he does is um, 50 of the dollars belong to the other guy. Mm-hmm. And that 50 made an extra $10 profit, so he has to give him back 60. 50 of the dollars was a loan to him. So he has to give back those 50. And he keeps the, he keeps the 10. So, um, so he's ultimately, he's giving back. Uh, once, ultimately, he's giving back to the guy that owed the, that gave him all the money. He's given him one hundred and ten dollars, and he keeps ten. So he keeps ten of the profit. They, they each made uh, ten dollars profit on this. So yeah. Total of twenty. I know of uh, 
someone who has like a different system with his credit card where someone um, pretty much gives his money to his card, allows him to get excess benefits, stops the coins, with the drivers, and things like that. So someone buys like you know a couple hundred dollars worth of something, pays him back immediately, and he gets the points because it's his card. That might be so. Uh, Jonathan is bringing up this thing, this thing with getting credit card points. I, you know, you you buy something for someone else, he pays you on the spot, and you end up getting points. <laughs> so um, what's there's a little uh, it's a, it looks like that's interest, right? But I think it's not interest because it's it's a, it's a third party. Against the credit card rule, the shop for your neighbors. Uh huh. Oh, well, I didn't know that. Even without the um, uh -huh. uh, points, it's to make for yourself. If you read the card in the back, the card, the card says property of Bank of America. The card is not even ours. Oh. Uh -huh. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> Let's start on the Gemara. <clears throat> We're talking about. The compensation that the laborer needs um, otherwise it's considered that he's doing labor just because he was received a loan from the investor he's laboring on, on, uh, on his behalf which would be interest so Tana what does the, the Brisa teaches that it says that he has to be paid as a worker Kapoil bottle he's paid like a a uh, idle um, laborer it's like a guy without a job what does that mean? One second, he was working hard over here. He's a uh, storekeeper or he's raising animals or something. Uh, you know, it is, there's, a, there's a lot of work over here. My Kapayal Batl, what does it mean, Kapayal Batl? Well, it's all relative. Amar Abaya, Kapayal Batl, Shalaisa Malacha, the Batl Mine. He had an even harder job before he started this. Now he's getting off his job. I don't know, he was uh, worked in a, uh, a quarry. A mine. <laughs> now he's getting off of that. He's working in a store. So, um, so how much would he be willing to take um, to do to to drop his hard work to do this cheaper work to do not cheaper work to do this lighter work? Um, that's what he's going to be paid. Which means that he's going to be paid less than. You have to look at his uh, look at his original job, and then and see how much he'd be willing to give to do this lighter job. <laughs> that has a hard job, uh, uh, much harder work than a than a storekeeper. So he's not going to be paid as a storekeeper, right? He's going to be paid as a. It's going to be more than a storekeeper. Is it more than a storekeeper? Is it less than a storekeeper? Because he had a job originally. This wage is somewhat higher than a standard storekeeper's salary. Since he has to give up the opportunity to earn his regular higher wage, nevertheless, the wage is lower than that of a carpenter or, or a smith. We're talking about a guy that's giving up a, a, a maybe a higher salary, but but to do a lighter work. So it can't be that he's getting paid exactly what the lighter work is because he usually does the higher. He usually is willing to work more. But if we'll tell him that we'll give him something similar to his original wage, but he has to work less, it's not going to be the full amount of his original wage, but it will be less. So there's a certain amount of effort to the loss that he'll be willing to take. Right. He's used to making more. Right. He's used to making more. That depends on how much easier it is and, uh, and how much lower it is, right? Okay. Now, in the Mishnah, we said 
that there were, that the Mishnah divided into two cases. One where he was giving him fruits and one where he was giving him money to buy fruits. Why do we have to do that? Why do we have to divide into two cases? It's the same story. You're getting a guy to sell fruits for you. Ah, Mesha uh, Shalom Sam. Utsricha, we need both of those cases. Ditana Khanmani, if we just say this with the storekeeper who was just selling fruits, Khanmani, the Sagali Kapayal bottle. Maybe the Khanmani, you could just pay like the idle worker, Mishum Blain Nafrish because he actually doesn't have a lot of work. So you're paying him less. Avul Mois, Likach Ben Paris. But if you're giving him money that he has to go and find the fruits and buy the fruits, the Nafrish that that's a big schlep. Go out to the farms and everything. Maybe it's not. You can't pay him like a pile bottle. You'd have to pay him for his original wages. And if we would just say that you're giving him money to buy the fruits, that would meant that he has the harder job. Maybe only over there you have to pay him like a pile bottle, which is a lot of money. But because that's a lot of effort. But that has a lesser job. He just has to stand behind the cashier. That's not such a big job. Maybe you can just give him the smallest amount. Give him, uh, I don't know, give him lunch. Even if you just allow him to dip his bread into your brine, you know, you sit down to lunch together and you say, here, you can dip into my uh, guacamole. So then um, it's here, it's fish brine, I think. Maybe they just shared together a prune, a dried fig, right? That could be enough. So Tzrichet has to say both that no, they you need a proper wages here, that um, to cover the to compensate for the effort so it shouldn't be interest. Okay. There's a mnemonic here to, for the next cases. It's Kama Easy Vitanagulin Malin Simon. That's the mnemonic. Itan Rabbanan Stunin Abraisa. Kama Uschare. How much wages do you have to pay when you get into a deal like this where it's Divide it up between a a, um, a loan and a deposit. So bein meruba bein muet, whether a little or a lot. Um, so whatever you make up, that's what it is. Rabbi Huda, Rabbi Huda says, I feel like Rabbi Huda has this lenient opinion when it comes to compensating, making sure that there's no interest here. Uh, compensating him, even the smallest amount is already a compensation. Yeah, a little, uh, a little uh, fish brine for lunch, or, uh, a prune, you know, it's already a benefit. That benefit is good enough to compensate for the effort. And then you're, you're, uh, it, 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 absol- it, it, it resolves the issue of, of putting in the effort because he got a loan. We think that he's, he's doing the work because he got a loan. And that's, that's interest. You're putting in all this effort just because he got a loan. No, we take care of it by giving him a little bit of fish brine. That covers the effort. As an example that's used, of- Wages of a poil bustle, someone who watches a field, a shomer of a field of watermelons or melons. Yeah, that was something else. That was a, the, yeah, the shamer kishuin. That was something else. That was someone that you paid him for his loss. Let's say someone damaged him. He couldn't walk here. He couldn't. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you paid him for his feet. You paid him for his arm um, because they damaged that. And now, but what about now he can't do work? So his original job where he used his feet, where he used his arm, you already paid that for that. So now we're paying him for what he's able to do at this level, which is just to what guard a, uh, because you already paid for the arm and that value of the arm included the work that, see, so it looks like you're paying, you know, how can you pay him twice for the work? You know, because why does, why was his arm worth so much? Because he was so that's not related to Rabbi Yehuda's point of view then. Right. Right. That's that was a different. That's because you already paid him. Like uh, you okay. covered already that. Now we here, here um, we're just giving a guy a job that had a different job, and we're we're trying to we're trying to evaluate what his effort is worth. So, and, and Rabbi Yehuda says even if you give him almost just a token, 
Yeah, Ramiza says you have to give a token payment for the effort. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, the professor's not here, but I'm sure, uh, um, what's his name? I'm, so, I'm sure Marx would have a comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, what the value of labor is. Okay. A very minimal amount, right? That's Rabbi Yehuda's view. Yeah, right. we're, we're dealing here with getting rid of the interest. It is a vakrivis. If you if you don't pay him, then it's a vakrivis because you're you're doing you're putting an effort, you're doing labor, and because you're receiving a loan, half the money is a loan. Reb Shem ben Yechai that he have to Rav Shimon says no, you have to pay him the the a real wages, which we explained before in the Bryce said that that would be like a pile bottle, like the the idle um, labor. Could be like uh, the but the opposite, like not paying, not taking advantage in a different way. Right, Maybe. getting cheaper labor. Yeah. Right. Uh, no, is it is it is specifically about the uh, price rug and, and receiving an item? Turn around, Banan. Another price. In Shaman Layas, he is in Malaysia, a Halem Lake called Avashina, Isa Vaikal and Mechza. When someone has to raise um, sheep, or uh, lambs, or anything that doesn't work. So you can't you, you can't just say that we'll split the profits because there's a lot of effort that goes into that. Now, what he's excluding here is something that does do work. Then the the work that the animal does, let's say a, a, an ox that, that plows a field. So you're raising the ox, but you also get work out of it. So the effort that you're put the that you're putting in. The labor that you're putting in is being compensated by the work that you get by using the animal during that time. So you're you're already compensated for the for the labor because you get to use the animal, right? Um, but an but an animal that doesn't give you any any uh, any benefits. So for that you have to be compensated for. It. You can't just divide it in half. You will you'll split half the profit. Rabbi Yehuda says, he's Rabbi Yehuda's son that we just learned about before. He says, Shaman Asizim Pnei Shechalvas. He says, one second. The goats, they give you milk. And Vesar Rechelem Pnei Shechalvas, Veshait Veis Samartas. They give you um, the hair that comes off when it goes in the water, when it goes through the, uh, um, the thorns. You're getting little uh, pieces of hair that maybe, I don't know what you can do with that. Use it for, um, you know, stuffing in your pillows, or uh, little bits of yeah. I don't know. But um, whatever, it's a little bit of uh, of income that you have, so you get something. So it's not a problem. Even for these animals, every animal gives you something. That's what he's saying. At least with these animals. But so he's he's uh, Kumar is going to tell us that he's following his father's view that fish brine was enough as a compensation. So this little bit of milk and this little bit of uh, hair is also considered a compensation. It's not like real um, benefit that you would get from an ox. Uh, oh, one second, I skipped. And the uh, chicken was also not a problem because it, what does it mean? It's um, it lays, it lays, it lays, it lays eggs. So you're gaining something from that. That's a big. Uh, that's a big benefit. I don't know how much the chickens eat, but, or how difficult it is. How much labor goes into raising chickens? Right. At least from what I've seen, it looks pretty simple. You just leave them in your backyard, and <laughs> but I don't, I don't. I never saw the labor part of it. See that. Yeah. Probably have to set it up right. 
Okay. Um, the Tanakama, Gisa Vachalov, Le Sipek, Laskaramali, Mazena. One second. What about the Tanakama? Why do they say that you need a full compensation here? The, uh, the shearings of wool and the milk, that's not enough to cover for the, uh, for the labor? The Gemara says, Begisa Vachalov, Kuliamali, Pligi. If he would be keeping the, uh, the shearings of wool and the milk, everyone would agree that that's, that's a fair compensation for the labor that he's putting in to raise these animals. Keep legally, we're talking about we are the investors keeping the, uh, the, uh, that part. And what's he giving the, um, what's he giving the laborer? He's giving him the way of the milk. Is that what they say there? Should be as the way, way with an H, right? It's the um, what, what do they say? Yeah, it's the it's the yeah, it's the uh, go a drop further. No, I don't need the notes. Just tell me the. Okay, go on. In which case to, uh, they argue. Disagree. In the case of uh, where the herdsman received the hungry bull. The way. The okay, good. And the wool that is shed for the prince's wife. Yeah. The contract of the See, he's getting just the uh, the way in the uh, in the wool, which is such a small amount. Now, Tanakama Savala Kershim Ben Yechai. Tanakama Hazak Shim Ben Yechai Dhamma Nice and Lisa Mishalim, that you really have to pay. Rib Shim Ben Yechai would be the author of our Mishnah now. That you have to be paid like a worker. And Rabbi Yisrael Behuda Savar La Kavua. Rabbi Yisrael Behuda says that uh, it holds like his father. Basically, Rabbi Yisrael Behuda and Rabbi Yisrael those two, uh, father and son, say that you're not really paying him as a worker. You're sort of paying him to volunteer. Just if that makes sense. You, you, you're giving him a little token to be just to satisfy his uh, his why he's putting in that effort. But the wage would be basically as if he didn't benefit from the use of the animals. And the way and the wage would be a full compensation. So Rav Shimon uh, Rav Shimon says you have to give him a real a real wage, and Rav Yosi Rav Yehuda and Rav Yehuda hold that you just have to give him that token uh, of the wage. He gets a little bit. Yeah, well, at the end, he's receiving half the profits. Oh. Problem is that he's he's borrowing that money. That he's, and that's why he's getting half the profits. He's borrowing half the money, and he's and half the money is a deposit. The value, half the and value. Of but he's doing the work on his part, and he's also doing the work on the other guy's part for free. So the work that he's the, sometimes people go into business like that. The other person has the capital, buys all these sheep, and it tells them, oh, look, take care of them, you could get it. Right, right. So the way we do it, that's the way business works, right? The way we do it is we consider half of the sheep to be a loan. And when that profits, he has to repay the principal and he keeps the profits. The other half is considered a deposit when that profits, it all returns back to the original owner. It turns out that let's say there was a hundred dollars here, and uh, fifty dollars he borrowed. Fifty dollars is considered a deposit. When it's now worth one hundred twenty dollars, so the fifty dollars of the deposit he returns with its profit of another ten dollars. So sixty dollars he gave back. The fifty dollars that was the loan, he returns the loan and he keeps ten dollars. That means. That the, the investor got one hundred and ten dollars back, one hundred as principal, ten profit, and he gets ten profit from the part that was on the loan. Now the only thing is that all his labor that he was doing on his own for his, for the loans part of the money that was labor for himself. That's good, perfect. But he also did labor for the other half, for the other guy. Why did he do that labor? Because the guy agreed to give him a loan. The labor because of that loan is uh, is interest. So we say, okay, we have to compensate him for that independently of the splitting of the profits.
that's uh, and that's and that's what we're talking about. Rabbi says, well, we can compensate him with just a token of a little fish brine. And Rabbi Shimon Ben Lissano, you have to pay him like a worker. Yeah, you follow. That's the way it's being divided. Kind of the converse was someone like used to rent cars, and they went out and paid extra on the depreciation. That's an interesting point. You see over there, when you pay it back, when you lease a car and you pay back, you pay for the use, and, and, and you also pay for the depreciation of the car. You also have to do the maintenance on the car, and, but you also get to use the car. So there's a lot of things that are wrapped up in that. that uh, I don't know exactly yeah, what, what's, <laughs> what covers what. It, it, it just, like, the knobs or anything like that, but he went to the knobs, like the biker and all that stuff. Right. And that's what basically what we're doing. We're saying that because you can get benefit from the ox, um, so that's so that's considered the token. That's considered the payment for the effort. Okay, we're holding by the next price. I think. Um, um, see, there's two two ways of doing this. Um, one woman has a chicken, the other one has eggs. Says, I'll let my chicken sit on your eggs. You'll, uh, but I want some of the, the, the eggs back. It's a business. I didn't, I didn't realize that was a business. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so that's totally not a problem because um, she's basically renting the chicken out and getting, it, getting back a payment for the rental. Um, but if she doesn't say that, if she says it, um, if a woman says to her friend, I have the chicken and you have the egg, you have the eggs. If you give me your eggs, um, I'll let my chicken sit on it. I'll do all the labor. And I'll give you back the, um, the profits. Who's the one that's taking the interest there? The laborer, the laborer is is, is getting um, is going to be earning the some profits here, but the owner of the eggs is going to be is the one that's getting interest because of the because of the labor, the free labor. So, right. Um, so when she's taking the eggs, we're, we're looking at this, that she's borrowing half and she's, the, the half of them are a deposit. And the labor that's going in is, is, is going to be free on the, um, on the deposit part. So, so what is she, what is she, how is she being compensated for that labor for the other person's eggs? Um, well, Rabbi Yehuda Matir, Rabbi Yehuda says that that's acceptable. Rabbi Shimon Eiser, Rabbi Shimon says it's not acceptable. Rabbi Yehuda, like boy, schar amali mezayin. One second, but well, Rabbi Yehuda always required something. But Rabbi Yehuda, and even if it's tzir, but what are you getting over here? The Gemara says ikab beitzim muzaris. Over here, there are some of the eggs that don't actually hatch; they um, they just eaten as um, scrambled eggs. Uh, those eggs that don't hatch, the, the laborer can keep them. Yeah. Like a, a, a dud. <laughs> Doesn't it? it uh, nothing happens with this egg. So they can eat that egg. Now, the Gemara talks about Nefesh Ayacha The Gemara talks about that those are um, who eats eggs like that. Um, there's only someone that's not, uh, that's not uh, finicky. What's the word? Someone that's not picky would eat, would eat those eggs. The owner of the hen has to pay the owner of the eggs half the price. Half. Half, because half is the loan. And the loan half. Okay.
Uh, and that follows Rabbi Yehuda's opinion, by the way, that that even a small amount is considered a compensation for the labor. Taner Abanan, started in the Bryce, Makam Shinaga Lahalis Char Kosef, Lamais Lebehema, Malin. Um, someone that's uh, raising animals. So the fact that he has to carry these young animals around in, uh, in certain places, they would compensate him for that, for the uh, just the transport, transporting these animals. And you can't change from what the local custom is. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel Gamliel says that Shaman Egel im Imai Vesayach im Imai says that um, you don't have to uh, give special compensation for the young if, if it's together with the mother, because the young automatically follow the mother. It would be only if it was without the mother, then you would have to double be more effort. But together with the mother, they naturally follow the mother, and that's not considered any effort. And if you're not, you don't have to pay for the mother because of whatever work the mother does for you, then you don't have to pay anything extra for the young. I feel even if it was, even in places where you normally would pay, but that's only if they were alone, the young, you were raising the young without the mother there. But what about the, um, what about the effort that you, have besides for the uh, carrying it around or whatever, but there is effort that you're putting in, which you're giving for free um, because you're getting some, uh, because you're getting a loan here. It says, there's the manure that you get to keep. Shimon uh, that sounds like Rabbi Yehuda's view, right? But uh, even fish brine. Be'idach, another one says, that the glalim, that's not considered a benefit. That's just hefker. And that's not a, that can't be considered like a compensation. Yeah. What do you do with the glalim? You use it as fertilizer. Or in that book, uh, Go My Son, he used it to keep away the mosquitoes. They would it and dry it out and burn it in the, in the, in the mountains in Kazakh, Kazakhstan and those places. The mosquitoes were terrible. You couldn't live, you couldn't sleep. They would burn the uh, dried manure and sm the smoke would keep them away. <laughs> keep them away. No, it, but apparently, apparently it, uh, it was the only way to survive. Yeah, over there, he almost got shot stealing Newer. That I mean, that was his, uh, and that this Holocaust book, Go My Son, an interesting book. And that was one of the little details there. Amr of Nachman, Rav Nachman Paskins, Allah Krab Yehuda. Look at that. Allah is like We're going to see it's not so simple, but that's what Rav Nachman says. Allah is like Rabbi Yehuda. Allah Krab Yehuda. Yehuda. Same thing, right? Uh, they follow the same opinion. Allah Krab Shem Ben Gamliel, that together with the mother, um, you don't have to pay compensation for the labor. Bnei Rav Elish Nafakalayo Ushtara. Okay, the sons of Rav Elish. Elish was a uh, maybe student of Rav or something. Um, it can't be. But he's a student of Rav. Maybe he's a teacher of Rav. Maybe a friend of Rav. Um, a, a document went out because of Bay that it said in the document Palga Baga Palga Palga It was a regular Iska document, but it, it was missing the part about being um, compensated for the labor. Which that's our whole mission that you can't make a document like this where you get half the profits without including the uh, the labor, the compensation for the labor. And this was a uh, one of the Amir Raim that had a document like this. Now he passed away and his sons had this document. So Amar Rava, Rava says, Ravilish Gavar Rabu, Ravilish is, was a great man. He never would have fed anyone something prohibited, which means he wouldn't have, um, wouldn't have paid interest. Manavshach, he says, there's gotta be something wrong with this document. So it's missing a detail. Ipal Gabagar, if he's supposed to be taking half half the uh, profits, then trade till si behefsit. And really the way they divided it was, it was two thirds to one third. One third was a loan. You see, take a look at it like this. One third was a loan, two thirds was a deposit. So the guy is supposed to be making, uh, the investor is supposed to be making two thirds. 
but they're dividing the profits in half. So the investor is, Dr. Stein explained this to us, that it's one, it's, uh, it's one six. There's one six that he's getting for his payment. Right? Half of it is three six. Three six is half. Now he's taking, he was really only supposed to get profit one third, right? Which is two six. And he's getting three six. He's getting one extra six for a, um, as, as a payment for the, to be compensated. So in other words, however, we, we see that they're getting half, half uh, he's getting half the profits. Why is half the profits? Because half is, uh, we're looking at half as the loan. And he said, no, <coughs> you're only looking at the end. Really the way it was divided, but it was met, we, we don't see it in the document, but the way that it was divided was really was divided by two thirds and one third. And he's still getting half the profits to cover for the compensation. There's an extra six that he's getting as the compensation for the labor. Yeah. And if it's, um, you would say it's the opposite that will say, trade uh, Celsibaga, then it would be two thirds would be the loan. They'll be liable. So, so no, I'm sorry. Then we do it the other way. If the financer is liable for, for the potential loss, so then that's talking about the two thirds. That's talking about the deposit. Is the two thirds? So the deposit was the two thirds. In the first case, the uh, the first option was the um, the loan was. No, how could the loan be two thirds? What does it mean, Palga Bagar, Palga Behefsit? Yeah, let me see there. Uh... If you choose to enjoy the rights to half the profits, then the financer agrees to be liable to two, for two thirds of any potential losses. That means that, that means that he is giving the deposit is two thirds and there's only one third for the loan. Oh, okay. Next case is, and if you choose to be liable for half the losses, what does that mean? Half the losses means that Losses means that we're talking about the <laughs> okay. Have the Generally, um, if he assumes liability for half the capital, that half is a loan. He is just entitled to any profit accused to that half. Should it be liable for only one third of the capital, his rightful share of the profits would only be one third. If he is nevertheless given half, <clears throat> half of any profits, the extra share is considered the finances payment to him for managing his share of the ISCA. Similarly, if the manager is liable for half the losses, then we go, oh, that's what we're doing. We're going back to the other guy. So Ipal Gabagar means um, If the guy that's taking the um, I'm just trying to figure out when it says trade Tulsi does that mean does that mean that it's that it's the
in the event that the iska was profitable, he would certainly choose half the losses and thus take two thirds of the profits. In the event the iska failed, he would obviously choose half the profits and suffer only one third of the losses. The financer cannot presume to have entered into such a lopsided arrangement. Rather, the intention was that Ravilish would exercise his option by a certain predetermined date. I get, what's, I get what's going on. Um, what's happening is he's telling him that um, if you want to take half the half the profits, then the way we're going to do that is the the financer is saying, "I'm going to own half the I'm going to own two thirds of the uh, of the." Uh, this arrangement because two thirds are going to be mine and only one third is going to be the loan, and I'll still give you half the profit because I'll pay pay you for that. Now, if you if you don't want to um, get half the loss, if you don't want to get more than half the losses, then I'll take um, if there's a loss. If there's a loss here, so then how are we going to compensate him for his efforts because of uh, that? Well, there's no there's no interest. I uh, know he has to pay back the loan. So he says, for that case, then you only want to take half the losses. Oh, if it if it loses, I don't want to only give you um, one third of the loss. I want to, I want you to take half the losses. So how is that going to work? Half the losses when he only um, when he only borrowed one third. So it would be one third of the losses. They said no. Then we're going to switch it. We're going to do is we're going to say you took two thirds of the of the loan, two thirds are now the loan, and I'm only giving you, you only have to pay half the losses because I'm compensating you one sixth for your efforts. So in other words, it's it, 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 this loan, this arrangement is made up that depending on what happens at the end, that's how we're going to decide how the arrangement is. Yeah. Now, in the, those notes, they're saying, "One second. How do you how do you work that out? It's supposed to be worked out before the end." It said, "No. At a certain date, we're going to decide the date before the end." Amar of Kana, Amisul Shmaita Kamei Rav Zvid Minardai. I said this over in front of Rav Zvid from Nardai Vamali. He said to me, "Dilma Ravilish Tevel Imay Betzir Have." Maybe how do you know that there was really a problem here? Maybe they were eating their lunch together, and and Rav Ilish was dipping his uh, his. Um, uh, his bread into the other guys. Uh, I don't know who who it, the Gemara doesn't tell me who had the money, who was the investor, and they were they were dipping in the same fish brine. And Rav Nachman like him. How do you why do you have to come into this compl complicated thing? It depends on what happens if there's profits, if there's losses, the two thirds, the one third. Maybe they were eating together. When you told me before, when the Gemara said before that the Allah is like uh, Rav Nachman says, Allah is like Rabbi Yehuda, he didn't really mean that Allah is like Rabbi Yehuda. He meant that Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yisib Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shem Ben Gamliel have the same view, but not that that's the halacha. Sometimes there's these things it's called shita, where they take a bunch of uh, views of different sages and they lump them together and say they're all the same opinion. And the, the interesting thing is the halacha is not like that opinion. So when he, what Rav Nachman was doing was just saying, it was just saying that that's a lump. That's a, uh, a bunch of sages that say the same uh, same thing. And the halacha is not like that. Taisus discusses that usually we pass like Rav Shem Gamliel anyway, uh, except in three places. So it's also logical to say that that's what Rav Nachman meant. If you don't say so, why does he have to itemize each of these sages? Just say, Yehuda was the most lenient of all of them. Just say, and it covers everyone else. Just a little bit of fish brine. I'm a Rav. Leave it here. Leave it here. Okay. It looks like we're going to be learning Thursday night. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Have a good day.
Is there a discussion anywhere of what drove or what required?